Hey everyone, it's your host Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and today we are going to be diving deep um, into the story of a man that is touching on something truly necessary in life. Very few individuals, very few people have found their purpose in life and connected with their purpose in life and are fulfilling their God-given destiny. And I was able to connect with this, this gentleman here coming to the stage who is making impact in the sex trade industry. He's been doing this for years. And when I tell you the girls he's saved, the women he's helped, the young ladies he's been able to free and not only free, but actually follow on continuing that service through education, through spiritual growth, through healing, through time, through energy and using his knowledge and his experience and growing every step of the way with these young girls. This man, I, I, I am so proud of what he's doing and pray for his health, his continued strength and his heart you all are going to see a true heart of gold. You won't want to miss one second of this incredible man coming to the stage. Here we go. Everyone. Coming to the stage, I have Mr. Kenny Satch. And this man is making, like I said before, making waves and waves and causing a huge ripple in the sex trade industry through his, his organization, Wipe Every Tear, that he started where he has the most humblest beginnings as a teacher, as an educator, as a coach, a mentor in basketball and volleyball which has led him all the way to the Philippines and starting and seeing these young girls and seeing the, the hopelessness, the, the, the hunger, the starvation and the mistreatment of these young girls. He has now started a, a foundation that was born in 2012 called wipe every tear. And he has here on the gentleman style podcast to share their story and share the impact him and his wife and how they have brought these girls and saved these girls and has helped these women get out of the sex trade. So I can't hold this gentleman back. And I need your help, our help, to welcome him to the stage, the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, as he shares and, and we get this message out. So help me, help him. Welcome, Mr. Kenny Satch. <laughs> Sir, thank you for being here. Welcome to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Oh, man, Marcus, it is so good to be with you. Uh, what a wonderful intro. Uh, I'm blessed by that and uh, can't wait to spend some time with you talking about what, what God is doing in the sex trade. It's really uh, it's really fun. I'm looking forward to it, man. It's huge. You're huge. This is this is absolutely necessary. I I think every podcaster in their their life has waited for an impactful interview and you have touched many people and today you've touched me and we are going to work hard to spread the word about what you're doing on wipe every tear about your organization. But first I, I want to touch on, did I get this correct? How are you feeling today in this moment right now? Currently, how do you feel right now? Your spirit, because everything you touch, right? You're, you're happy. You have a heart of gold and you're smiling, but the work you're you're doing is not easy. No. And and so how are you feeling today, brother? What tell me what's what's on your spirit? Well, you know, um I'm feeling good, you know. <laughs> and um uh, I'm I'm hesitant here, but I'm going to I'm going to you said how am I feeling now? So I'm yes, I'm going to take that literally, literally. I uh I'm hungry. I'm so hungry for God. I'm so hungry for for Jesus. I'm so hungry for for more of his goodness and uh, more of who he is in my life, and, and that I can pass that along to others. I'm just, I'm just desperate for, for God, Marcus. I'm just desperate for Jesus. <laughs> I'm uh, en encouraged with, uh, even in the middle of the sex trade and the, the evils and the, the wretchedness that there is from that, oh man, I'm, I'm encouraged about what God is doing in the earth today. I can't do you justice, but how does a basketball coach, right? I, I look at educators like yourself 
my father, my parents were educators. They were teachers. Um, and so you're more than just a coach, right? You're a mentor. You're a leader in, in these young women, young men's lives. And so how does one transition to now in 2012, wipe every tear? Tell us about your organization and how, how you got started and, and what, what caused it. Yeah, Marcus, I, I never thought that I would uh, be involved in the sex trade on the good side of it. You know, I, I never, uh, either of the sides, uh, uh, but I never thought that I'd be involved in getting girls out of these bars where there's thousands of girls and and and, and bringing them from uh, from just tremendous poverty to to great prosperity and, and new lives you know i thought i i thought i'd be a, a teacher and coach really until i was old and, and maybe uh you know keeled over in the classroom you know or, or the court you know i thought i'd be coaching and, and teaching forever but it was it was in 2007 that we took a, a basketball trip in the christian school that i'm teaching uh, i was teaching in Coal Valley Christian High School here in uh, Boise, Idaho. And uh, I, I had been wanting, I'd been telling my staff, let's take our, our high school kids on world international mission trip. And they, they'd listen to me and I just thought, I just want to get our kids out there, you know? And so, uh, you know, the answers were back then, you know, there was hesitation, like uh, how safe is it? How this and that, you know, ah, no, let's, you know, so I just kept, you know, every once in a while just mention it. Well, one day, uh, I got a, f a phone call from a, a good friend of mine, Brad Carr. Brad was uh, our, our assistant principal back then and the head coach of the boys' varsity team. And he said, hey, I talked to a guy today. He's looking for a basketball coach, basketball people, to take people to the Philippines. And uh, so he went to the Philippines, had a great time. It was really good. So that's a short little episode there. Then I, I wanted to bring my girls the next year in 2007. My girls, I was not a volleyball coach, but I was a basketball coach and a track coach as well. But I, uh, I, I thought, how do I get my girls here? The, the girls in the Philippines don't play basketball, they, but they, they do play volleyball. So I thought, hey, I'm going to bring our high school girls here next year for, an, for a volleyball trip. We were working with a church there in the slums of Manila, Pastor Clark Dingkong, a little church called Harvest. And we went, and it was then that I uh, saw a glimpse. My heart just began to change. I began to see some things. And so now I'm going to fast forward you from 2008 to uh, from that summer to Christmas of that year. And I was on my laptop uh, at home and uh, during Christmas break, and a pop-up came up. Like, you know, pop-ups. I mean, that, I, is that a thing of the past? I don't know. I have a Mac nowadays. I don't know. I don't know but but pop-ups will come up on your screen, you know? And there were pop-up blockers and stuff, you know? And there's always a, 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 a nuisance. And this one came up. I remember in the right-hand corner, it went, boop. And I looked at it, you know, I went, and it said, the sex trade or something like sex trafficking. And I went, what is that? I clicked and I clicked and I began to read about the sex trade in the world. And I was deeply distraught. And, and you know, Marcus, the reason I was distraught is that I had spent probably um, 10 to 20 years at that point. Oh, yeah, over 20 years asking God this genuine, uh, this genuine request. And I said, oh, God, would you break my heart for the things that break yours? I, I, I just want to be broken with the things that break you, you know? Wow. And as I began to read that, what I was I was clicking and clicking, and it went to it went to Asia, and then it went to Southeast Asia, you know, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, those kind of places, and it went to the Philippines, which is a set of islands south of that, all by themselves, seven thousand islands, and and I thought, the Phil the Philippines, I. I've been there and I began to click and I'm going like, well, oh, 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 I, I know this area. I know this part of Manila, Philippines. I, 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 but I never saw it. And, and I'm reading these stories, Marcus. And I began to get so sobered in my mind. And I was asking the question, how do you traffic a human being? How do you own and have control over a human? Now I'm a father of five lovely daughters. So everything from that first day of seeing this, everything is coming through that grid, that paradigm that I'm seeing through is through my daughter. So I'm looking at, at this stuff online. I'm thinking, what if this was my daughter? And I began to break. I began to cry. I began to sob in that December of 2008. 
my family was all in bed and I was just staying up late. No school tomorrow, you know, it was on the break, right? And I, I looked and I said, oh God, this is insane. This is so wrong. And I remember crying, Marcus, and I, I had my laptop on my lap and I looked down and there were tears on my keyboard. I, it, they were streaming down, they were coming down, and I was just, you know, that feeling that you get right here and right here, kind of like in those two places, it just, it starts getting heavy, it starts getting constricted, it feels like there's all this pressure, and I was sitting there crying, and I said, oh God, if there'd be any way that I could just set one girl free, I, I, I don't know how I could ever do that, but if I could, like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you have no idea. I said, God, I just, I would love to set a girl free. And that was the beginning, Marcus. And that took me on a, on a three-year journey, 2008 to nine, one year, 10 and 11. And we were doing another basketball trip at that point. It was a basketball rotation. And uh, I went to the Philippines and uh, I had these uh, two young kids. That they're now married, but one had been on our first basketball trip in 2007. And uh, and then uh, his wife, then a single gal, uh, they they she she came on on the that volleyball trip in 2008 they got married and they were on both on this trip and i'd been talking to them uh they were f my former students you know and uh, just loved them dearly and i'd been sharing with them what god was breaking my heart about in uh, regarding the poor and the broken and, and specifically to the sex trade and they were just like all ears just like coach tell us tell us more so here we are in 2010 there and uh and they were going to stay behind for three months working with this church in the slums. And they, they literally asked me, they said, okay, coach, here we are. It's our last day together. Give us our marching orders while we stay behind. I told these almost teenagers, they're just like maybe 20, 21 years old at that point. And I said, uh, okay, Alex and Colleen, Alex and Colleen Canfield. I said, Go, we've been, I've been, I've been mentoring you about the sex trade and about the evils of sex trafficking. Go find the sex trade and find us a place to stay that's near the sex trade. <laughs> they did. They went and found it. They, 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 I mean, they're 20 years old. They could have been 19 and 20. I, 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 don't, I mean, they weren't very old. They hooked me up with a, a guest house and their, their ministry was working with a sex trade, a ministry called Samaritana. So grateful for, for uh, Jonathan and Thelma Nambu of, of Samaritana Ministries in the Philippines. And I began, we took our team there. We took our team, met a gal, Becky Angelis, who was in charge of it there. And I went with high school kids in 2011. It was time for volleyball. And we took, I took a team of high school kids to do the volleyball thing with the church in the slums. And then for the second week there, go find the sex trade. I emphasize, yes, you heard right, with high school kids, high school teenagers. And Marcus, we found the sex trade. I saw it with my eyes. And I was, I'd, I'd ask the Lord, give me your heart, God. And I, I, over the years, I'd say, give me your eyes to see what you see. I want to smell what you smell. I want to hear what you hear. I want to touch with you what you touch. And uh, I saw it. That's the beginning of the sex trade. To be, yeah. to, be, to be clear, when you, when you empowered and gave those two teenagers their marching orders, you were giving them specific marching orders to go find a place to house victims of the sex trade? Did uh, no, I said find us a guest house, which that that's for those that don't know that the that's like a, a hostel or you know we would say a hotel, but it's really not a hotel. It's it's more, it's very small usually, and they might have five rooms, six rooms, ten rooms, you know, fifteen rooms. And this was uh, I just said, could you just go find a place? We were staying at, we on our previous trips. We were staying in, in in hotels, and our kids would walk out of the hotel and. There was a mall nearby. They'd go to the mall, and 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 so they were they were they were like in the third world, but they'd walk into these fancy malls, and they like into the first world again. There, you know, nice food and nice thing. And I I said I don't I want to get away from that. I want to I want to immerse my team into 
the third world. I don't want to be within walking distance of those places to go buy that kind of stuff and, and have ice cream and McDonald's and Dairy Queen. And, and so he went and found this place, this ministry called Samaritana. So that makes and sense. It was good. Yeah. That makes sense. So the, the, you wanted to give that real world experience because at a hotel, can, it can be, it can be sheltered. They can have gates. They can have security cams to hide what's really going on right yeah. in front of your face. I wanted more of the, yeah, let's get out of that. Let's, uh, let's see the, the real world here in the Philippines. And we did. And that's, During, when, I was, that's when I was so broke. Huge. I told y'all, I told y'all, this is, this is impactful for anyone feeling triggered. Please, if, if you're feeling triggered, tune out. But if you're with us, continue to stay with us because yeah. this man is, is really moving and really, really doing something impactful. Mr. Mr. Satchio. <laughs> Sir, you and these, these young powerhouses, I want to call these young heroes. I'll say that these young heroes, you, you empowered them. And you took them out there. What, what causes a, a young woman to get caught up in the sex trade? Are they abducted? Are they kidnapped? Are they groomed? How did you, what, can you share any nuggets yeah. or any thoughts on how, how these women get caught in up in this, these, these sex trade rings? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, it's not like we think uh, people who are listening, watching, we think of Hollywood stuff where the, a van pulls up and then, you know, goes out and grabs the girl and then throw in the van and they take her off. Now that does happen. But the, 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 the vast majority of trafficking in the world is uh, exploitation of vulnerability, meaning, you, meaning you, you find someone who's vulnerable. And in the Philippines and in the third developing world, there's hunger, there's poverty, there's homelessness, there's, there's living in little shacks, you know, and uh, parents, people don't have jobs. So you're vulnerable to someone, in this case, coming through your, your little town, your little village in the countryside. It's, it's called provinces there. They have provinces. And so somebody comes through and comes through an area and they go to a, like a center part of the, the little the little town or the little village and they start saying, hi, I'm here from Angela City in Pampanga, the province of Pampanga, and I'm here to recruit workers to come and work in our hotels and our restaurants. And the girls, and they're all going to girls. And the girl's response are, oh, I don't have a college degree. I don't qualify to, to, to work. Because in the Philippines, you can't work at McDonald's. You can't work in, in, in those kinds of entry-level jobs without a college degree. And I'm not exaggerating. Wow. And so, and so, so the girl says, I, I'm not eligible. Uh, and, and then the answer is, oh, there's such a supply, there's such a demand for workers in this huge restaurant uh, industry and hotel uh, tourism industry that, that we, we're taking all sorts of girls. And then they do that. What, what, like, like you would consider me? Yes, let's have an interview. They interview a fake interview, you know, uh, they're trying to find pretty girls, you know, and uh, she's flattered, you know, her family saying, you get to go off, you get to work a real job. And we're talking a long ways away. We're talking two or three days travel uh, by airplane. You know, it's a couple hours, right? But by sure. by boat, by by jeep, by by motorbike in many cases, and by buses and 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 uh, whatnot, it takes them uh, forty eight to seventy two hours to get there. So um, that that's how it happens. The girl arrives. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, this is a real story. One of our girls, she told me her story. She says, I arrived and this, I was so tired, coach, because it took me almost three days to get there. And she said, uh, they gave me an address and said, you meet at this place. So she met at this place this next day. And she went to, and she, as she's walking in, she goes, this is a, this is a bar. Mm. On, on this street where there's all these bars. And so she went in and the person who was interviewing her, receiving her, uh, 
starts talking to her and stuff and whatnot. And she says, like, why, why are we meeting in a bar? And she goes, oh, uh, the, 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 the lady that says, oh, you've, you've arrived too late. And those jobs that we recruited you for are no longer available. Um, but, but we gave you that money. Yeah, wow. We gave you that money and you need to pay us back now. Now she's going like, I, I, there's, I don't have any money. And in this case, she's a dear girl, one of our graduates actually. She's crying, telling me the story, Marcus. And she says, the guy looked over, I'll just be her, the guy looked over at this box of bikinis and he said, grab a bikini and be out here in two hours. And she goes, coach, I was trapped in the sex trade and I had nowhere to go. Wow. That's how the majority of girls in the third world get, get involved in, in sex trafficking because of their great poverty. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Sir, yeah. th these women are trapped and, and thank you for, for sharing that young girl's story. Thank you for expressing what these women are facing, the obstacles. These these women are bought, they're they're bought, they're tricked. It sounds like even the family is tricked, right? Because they're coming yeah. for a job opportunity and then they'll switcheroo. And then here it is. We we need you to pay back that debt. And money, money is always money can be used for good, and in this case, money is used for evil. Yes. You said it, switcheroo. Yeah. You started in, in 2012 to help help these young girls and combat these these evildoers yes. and what they're doing. Uh, what were some obstacles? What were some of the big obstacles you faced when 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 starting up and, and getting up, you know, essentially a business? But this this is more than a business. Right. Because this is a need. Right. And, and this is necessary to what these girls are now being liberated from, right? You're a liberator, you're a crusader. And so what were some obstacles that you faced? Was it getting to convincing the girls to come over? Was it getting licenses? Was it getting funding? What were some obstacles that you faced? Uh, um, you mentioned them. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, it, I mean, it takes money to get a girl out of said bar, you know, right. in this town and moving to an, and, and, and having your safe houses in another city and being a couple hours away and you got to feed her and clothe her. And she has college tuition, which by the way, you can do this so cheap in the Philippines. It's, it's like, it's like ridiculous. Uh, how, how inexpensive, uh, many things are how inexpensive college education is compared to America. I mean, it's just a fraction. It's just a pittance, but, but, but uh, uh, surprisingly, this, this might surprise you a little bit, Marcus, our, our greatest enemy was the enemy, the enemy known as uh, Satan, the Prince right. of darkness. And you're like, well, of course, you know, the listeners might, yeah, of course that's it. But uh, Marcus um, in, in that, in that 2000, and 11 trip when I took those high school kids and I took a handful, just two or three college kids that were some of our, excuse me, some of our former students. This is a tough one uh, to, to believe uh, for a lot of people. I was driving home from the, our final meeting. It was, it was June, the end of the or end of May graduation has taken place and uh, we're going to leave in three days. We're going to get on the airplane. We're going to fly across the world with all these high school kids and, and a handful of parents, including my, my bride, my wife, and a couple of my own kids. Uh, and uh, I was driving home. We lived out, out of town a little bit. Doesn't take, we live in a small area, small area of, of the world here, Boise, Idaho. And we're driving out and we're getting out where there's no, uh, no stop, no stoplights and no, no lights at the streets. You know, it's just dark. And went to this one four way stop out in the country a little bit. And I had an entity, a spirit of some sort, a spirit, a demon spirit, a, a, a power of some sort, appear in the road in front of me and mm. walked in front of the car in front of me and then disappeared. And I thought, I, I, like, what? what? 
by the way, it looked as a human. Right. And and I, and I looked and went like, what was that? Like what what what? And uh, there's a car like this here, and the car here, and this one took off, and I was behind the car. We went one more mile, another stop sign, and I was much closer to the car this time. And that thing appeared a second time. The first time, I just went like, I don't, I don't know. I didn't see the person get out of the car. The passenger got up, maybe to move something off the road. You know, I, I don't know what it was. I was so tired. It's into the school year. Teachers and coaches are tired, and we're just getting ready to take off. You know, it appeared a second time in the road on the left-hand side with a car in front of me. And I went, oh, man. Now, I'd never experienced anything like this ever. This thing appears to me and gives me these big black beady eyes and looks at me and, and walks to the car in front of the car in front of me. And he disappeared. I could see through the windows, and he wasn't there. And I thought, how, what? And I, I looked, I leaned over, looked again. I thought, well, this just happened. What's happening here? And all of a sudden he peeks, he, he jumps on the hood of the car. I mean, I don't see that, but he jumps on the hood of the car and he does this. And he looks over and he says, he looks at me with those beady eyes and he says the following to me. Now, some, maybe someone's already checked out and said, this guy's a nutcase. You know, I'm not one of those demon under every bush kind of guys. But I'm telling you, I was there. This happened. Right. And that thing, that thing looked at me, and, he, and, he, and he's looking over like this here. And he goes, I hate what you're doing. Uh, especially, and he raised his voice three, four times. Especially the sex trade. <laughs> And the right. car takes off. And I thought, what in the world have I just experienced? Right. So, so th th there's your answer. And this then, is this and is then in some Manila. Things happened. What's <laughs> this is in Manila? Uh, this is here in Boise, Idaho. In Idaho. Okay. This is the, the, we're right be three days before we take off with this group of high school kids. We're gonna we are going to go find the sex trade. We're going to do the volleyball trip. In the second week, their parents have all agreed. Our, our administration said, you go do this. I mean, this is risky business, but man, you've never let us down. Go do this. That demon knew what you were going to do. Yeah, he you, did. He knew what the mission was. Yeah. And, 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 then, and then over the ensuing minutes after that, I'm, by the way, I wanted to get one more natural look on that car. So it, that car drove off. I, I had, was turning left. I went to get out really fast to look. I needed one, one look. I wanted to see the hood of that car. Right. One more natural look with my eyes, my physical eyes. Is there someone on that car? There was not Marcus. And I'm driving. I'm driving this direction. I'm driving that way. I'm driving down the road. And I hear God speak to me as clear as I'm speaking to you right now. And he says, that thing wanted to jump on your car. I would not allow him. He wants to jump on your car right now. Well, imagine hearing the, that. You hear that and you're going like, oh God. Like, and, and, and that sound. Can you picture, can those who are watching, listening, picture driving at night at dark, 1030 at night, and you hear a thump on top of your car? Like, can you picture that? You know, I mean, can you feel that? I, I could. When, when God spoke that to me, I could feel it. Yeah. And, and God says, but I'm not going to allow him. But he goes, he wants to jump on your car, and he wants to look at you in your window driving, and he wants to look upside down. He wants to go like this and look at you and stare you in the face, this time not dressed as a man, but as who, re who, he, who he really is, an evil demon. And I went, oh, God, I, I'm praying. I, I put my, I'm driving with one hand. I put my hand up here and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like laying my hands on this, on my car going, no, no, no. And then God says to me, then God, then God speaks to me, says, he wants to kill you. He wants you to, 
and then God showed me my obituary. Can you believe? Can you believe this? I mean, uh, can you believe this? I'm, I'm, I see my obituary, newspaper obituary. Did you want to turn around? Did you want to quit at that moment? Did you want to give up and and cancel the whole thing? Well, at that moment, I'm I'm in the moment of what's happening, yeah. but it was served to uh, scare me. It didn't. It only ignited me. And so God showed me my obituary. It says, Kenny Sacked fell asleep at the wheel, swerved off the road. And God said, God said, oh, by the way, God said to me, he says, he, here's what he wants you to, to fall asleep. Or actually, he, no, God said, he, want, he wants you to go, ah, you know, when he sees you, ah, and go, whoosh, and hit the power pole. There's these power poles. They're on the side of the road. To hit that power pole, die on impact. Cause a suicide. Uh, make it look like a suicide. He was no, trying. Not, to. No, not no. Just as an accident, like yeah. like whoa! I freaked out, and and I hit this thing, died. Right? Like yeah. so, so, he fell asleep. He fell asleep at the wheel. That's what. And so the, my obituary says, Kenny Sack, da da da, uh, uh, you know, uh, died on impact. Da da, da survived by his wife and children. Was a coach and teacher. Da da da. da had started this thing called Wipe Every Tear, which we were, but not the sex trade yet. And and he, that's when he said but I'm not going to let him. That's how we started. That's how we began. I'd never seen a bar, I never, but I was going to see it this time. I'd never seen a trafficked girl in my life. But <laughs> So you asked the question, yeah. what are the obstacles? I'm telling you, there, there are these obstacles that are unseen things. Yes, they're manifest in, we do, we do need money. I mean, we, we we do need money to feed all these girls. You know, it takes a lot of money to 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 run an organization. You know, I never thought I'd be doing this, and but it, but it takes a lot of money. You have staff in the Philippines. You have all these Filipino staff, and you have government requirements, and you have a house, and you have food, and you have everything that takes to live and and, and do what you're doing. But uh, our greatest enemy is the enemy, that evil. <laughs> We are going to go to a quick commercial break. We have to pay some sponsors, but you guys stay tuned, stay with us, don't go anywhere. We'll be right, right back. Are you a local business looking to offer your customers easy access to cash without having to travel miles? We're here to help. At Norman Legacy Investments, we provide free ATMs with free installation that provide a suitable investment for your business. Even better, we offer you some profit sharing and handle everything from start to finish. Just reach out to us today to schedule a free consultation. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show, and we have the incredible Mr. Kenny Satch and his organization that is changing lives and changing these young girls' lives and destroying sex trafficking in the Philippines, in the world, with his organization, Wipe Every Tear. Sorry, I, 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 it's, it's the evil of these people, the evil of this organization, and to, to think that this has been around for so long, like you said, owning another human being and and forcing them to do things against their will against their their values their morals beliefs and what they've been put on this earth to do but you are changing that and changing lives every step of the way I, why do you think they the sex traffickers why do you think that they have them because it sounds like it has them out in the open and in these bars yeah, why do you are. think they use bars instead of other means you know well, they advertise it as a fan, believe it or not, a family friendly uh, street to come to. What? 
And I am not wow. joking. I have seen marketing st stuff that talks about family friendly. You know, it 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 uh, it provokes that thing in us, you know, to go out and we want to party. Picture Las Vegas. Uh, may, maybe many people have been to Las Vegas or even Reno, or I know the East Coast has you know different things like that too. But when you know Las Vegas is the king of places, e even in the world, right? Everyone wants to go to Vegas, to the partiers anyway, you know, and uh, so picture that, but in the third world. And uh, that's how I describe it. It's the third world Vegas. So there's 240 bars in the area on this one street. There's, I don't know how many, there's a lot of bars. Uh, it's called Fields Avenue or, or the walking street. And the lights are flashing at night, and, uh, you know, and there's girls, there's and the many girls, door girls out in the front and they're luring you in. Hello. Then they speak English, you know, come on in, come in, come in, come in. And they're trying to lure you in. By the way, they're all, they're all trafficked and uh, they're wow. trying to get customers in uh, to their place. You know, that's their job. And uh, that's how they get paid. And so they use that, that it looks, it looks very fun. Hey, let's go, you know, lights are going, people are smiling, laughing. And, you know, that party spirit of, you know, going, you know, and getting drunk and doing drugs or whatever. And then, and then buying girls, buy, actually buying a girl for the whole night. They don't buy them for an hour. They buy these girls. That, that you own her all night long into the morning. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Your organization, you've, you've, you, and this is all on your website. Your organization, wipe every tear. Um, you guys do many things for them. One of them is you provide food for these girls. Like you actually carry, and this is all on his website, wipeeverytear.org. You guys provide food for these young girls, and there's pictures and there's testimonials and there's videos and of of what's called a red light district, I believe. And so what, what else does the organization provide in addition to, um, um, to help these young girls and to, to help them get out of it? You know, Marcus, we have, we have a card. <laughs> in fact, I think it's right here. I do have one. We have a card. And when we're in the bars and the streets, we, we give these to our, uh, to our, to, to the girls. And, uh, it says right there, wipe every tear. I don't know if you're seeing that backwards or forward. I don't know. Can you? I don't know if it's forward or not. But it's forward. Okay, it's forward. Yeah. And then, so we give them this. We're talking to them. We bring teams from America. By the way, we cannot. Filipinos cannot get into the bars. Check this out. Filipinos cannot get into Filipino bars. These bars only allow foreigners in. So we do mission trips. By the way, if anybody's listening to this thing, and I don't know when this is going to air, but we do mission trips all the time. But we're doing a mission trip at the end of October. And it's not too late. I don't know if you'll put this up soon or not, but end of Oct October 22 through November 1. And uh, we'd love to host you. We need people to come. And then on the back of that, it says, what we do. What do we do? And it describes. And we walk through these things. We give these to our participants, you know, our, our uh, short-term missionaries. Could be you, Marcus. Could be you, your, your wife, your friends, family, church members, businesses. And we walk through and we describe to them what we provide. And they actually, these girls sometimes start crying. They go like, what? It says free, free clean housing, beds, meals, tuition, daily allowance, child sponsorship. Um, it says we help bar girls and freelancers achieve their dreams, education, training, college, vocational, high school, ALS. And then we wrote on this, too good to be true? <laughs> Question mark. Because we want them to see. To, they, they they look at this. They think we are traffickers. They think right. we're lure them in. The bars tell them, hey, don't go with wipe every tear. They're going to put you in a container on a ship. They're going to ship you overseas. Don't go with wipe every tear. They're going to put you in a brothel under lock and key, and you'll never leave that building. Uh, and 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 you 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 live downstairs by the day. You come up at night. And then the one that really gets them is they say, wipe every tear is posing as this ministry, as this do, these do-gooders, that's what they call us, the do-gooders. and But they are really organ traffickers. Don't go with wipe every tear. They're going to kill you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so we have to combat that as well. Um, but we provide is everything. People ask me, I go, every, what do you mean everything? Medical, dental, vision, everything that you would, that you, you would take care of your own daughter. That's what we do. How many how many women have you rescued today? Yeah, 
Well, the question is like, how many girls have come into our care? Hundreds. Uh, how many have actually graduated? Um, well, I say hundreds, you know, a couple hundred maybe or something like that. And, and maybe someone listening, they go, only 200 girls? Well, this is a this is a, a huge endeavor to take a girl who has, oftentimes they have a third grade education. That's it. So now she's got to go to elementary school or she's got to take a, a GED, which is called ALS in the Philippines, alternative learning system. And then she's got to graduate from that she may be 20 years old. She, she, she may be 22 years old. Has, has, sometimes at first grade, that's it. She's got to finish elementary school. She's got to go then go to high school or, or finish a, an equivalency program of high school and in order to get into college. And then she's got to go to college for a four-year degree. We're talking a four-year degree. So we've had uh, around 65 college graduates now. And, and we have 30 plus in our care. So we have 30 more graduates coming soon. Uh, and, but we've had many others come into our care. Some have actually, the question is how many have returned back to the bar? We've had, we've had a few. We've had a few that go back. Uh, more than you know, you'd be happy with, right? They just, they do that. And we still have a relationship with them. And some have come back out to come a second time to get restored. And then, then they finally stay. Uh, but we've had many come out and they've, they've they've somehow through just the wonderful grace of God they were they were able to, to find uh, like a, a husband who married them and uh, they end up having children and, and and whatnot and so we've had uh, like I said 65 graduates college graduates and they become business women they become teachers they be, whatever they we'd let them choose their their major they get to choose their course and uh, I'm thinking of one girl right now. Her name is Marion. She lets she says, "You tell people my name." We never use names, but we do with her. Marion came to us, a little tiny gal, and uh, working in this bar. I was in the bar that night when she came out. I was in the bar, and she graduated. And and this day, I hope she sees this thing, man. I'd love for her to see this. Um, she came out. She graduated. Have some rough times. It, it, you know, it's it's tough. You know, it's, it's a long haul. She now owns five grocery stores in the city where she was trafficked. She owns five grocery stores. Now they're smaller. They're in neighborhoods. But imagine five little convenience stores. And, and, she, and she does other stuff on the side. She has also, and, she, and, she's, and she helps people. And she's, she's been totally transformed. Her downline, her family poverty no more she's married to a great guy and uh, that's just one of our girls and i can tell you many many more uh, of, of these girls who went from being trafficked and in great tears and anguish to such great happiness and uh, wonderful prosperity in, all in the name of jesus Are you receiving a lot of, of obviously we, you, we need donations, or yes. are you receiving a lot of government assistance and government funding and, and, and some church fund, churches are supporting this. I saw on the website, um, you have some churches um, locally and, and here in the United States supporting. Um, are you receiving a lot of assistance from the government? Zero government. Mm. Once, once you become a government organization, you have to do all their stuff and you have to do this and do that. And, 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 and you can't speak about sin. I mean, there's sin. You can't speak about heaven and hell and about uh, eternity with, with a good God. So we, we are uh, an NGO is what the world uh, calls it. We refer them as nonprofits here, but it's a, but it's a nonprofit NGO, non-government. We don't take anything from the government. We don't want them to tell us what to do. And so everything we, it's totally by faith, brother. That makes it's sense. Totally by faith. We just, from the very first day, my kids started donating a little glass jar that they put on my desk, putting quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies in, dollar bills, and and we've continued today. It takes it takes a lot of money actually. That's true. I need your help to help us help we. How 
can we, my audience and myself, identify a young girl that's being trafficked? What are some telltale signs? Yeah. That, uh, because, um, you know, it may not be obvious. It wasn't obvious to you. I mean, you cl- it came as a pop-up. You clicked it, and you got sucked into a whole new world. What are some signs that you can share of a woman that may be getting trafficked? Yeah. Um, I'm not an expert with America and I'm really not an expert in, in, in uh, uh, the rest of the world, but I mean, I do have a lot of experience in that. So, and whatnot. And and so it's really different identifying factors, but, but here in America, uh, and again, I'm told by, by, I have friends that are involved in it, you know, and, and so what I'm saying is not exhaustive by any means, but um, drugs are almost always involved. So you have a drug dependent person, you know, who's uh, on drugs. They could be very thin, and uh, and and look like you know they're in they're in uh, great need, and uh, that's just one of the things. And and uh, and 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 then they have money. Like, how do you get money when you're not working? You know, True. things like things like that. And uh, those are just some of the identifiers. And and uh, here in America, awful. What's a, what's a, (laughs) how can we help someone that's being trafficked, right? I've seen someone, should I, obviously, because I don't have your card. Is there anything that you would tell someone, tell the police, tell the local authorities? Are there any things that you could, that you would suggest someone do if I suspect someone being trafficked? Yeah, here in America, there's a trafficking hotline. Just just uh, search it online and just go a twenty, you know, trafficking hotline, and you'll probably find all sorts. Depends on what city you're in, what part of the country you're in, and there's organizations all over the all over the country that have a twenty four hour manned uh, telephones uh, for people to talk to them and to try to talk them off the cliff, so to speak, and to consider just to consider. But they are so controlled by their pimps. It's, it's such a it's such a terrible thing. They're controlled by their pimps. You if you call anybody, you talk to anybody. I'm going to beat you, you know. And they've been beaten before, so they know what it's like to get beaten. So, but uh, we do have hotline numbers, and so I just say have them call or you call the hotline number. Perfect. You you're inviting you're inviting me. You're inviting anyone to come out on a missions trip. Um, yes. You have one coming up in October. How safe are these mission trips? Ah. Uh, that's one of the most asked questions, Marcus. You you did it, man. You did it, brother. Um, first, I say I'll, I'll have like you know you have to be eighteen and above to go on our trips, right? So yeah. uh, so they're all adults. I will have I've had parents call me of their twenty year old wants to come, you know, and I love entertaining the phone calls. How safe is it? I mean, I mean, are, can you guarantee her safety? Can you guarantee she's going to come back? Can you guarantee? And I go, well, with respect, you know, everything. I said, well, Mister So and So can. How safe it is is it in Chicago where you live? Mm. Can, can, can you go out at night in Chicago? How safe is it when you get on the, the train? How, when you get on the subway, how safe is it? When, when, when you go to work, how, I will say, when you go to work, how safe is it getting on the freeway? How safe, how, how, and, and, then I'll say, and then I'll say to them, please define safe. And they have a hard time defining the word safe. And I go, well, if it's like the Apostle Paul who said to follow in his steps, he says, to follow me. He he was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was tortured. He was stoned. He was all the above. And I go, like, how safe is it to be a follower of Jesus? And then I'll say, I cannot guarantee your safety. However, we've never once ever been threatened in a bar. Never with a knife, never even a fist. And so uh, it's, it's, you feel, you feel very secure. You feel very, very secure. Powerful. Powerful. How can, sir, the train has left the station and you are changing the paradigm. You and wipe every tear are changing the, the world for the better. How can people connect? How can we connect and, and, and find out more because it's not too late to get on board no. and, 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 and make a difference. How can we connect with you? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, yes, I am one of many for this team. We have a team in the Philippines of Filipino, Filipino ladies. 
that are just marvelous. I mean, they're just marvelous. And then I have missionaries. Uh, we just have a, a couple that just 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 flew there. They've been there uh, a little over a week, about two weeks now. Uh, uh, they're in their fifties. Two children. They just sold everything and moved to the Philippines. Uh, we have another couple there that just moved from Hawaii, just retired from the military. They just moved there. And we have another couple there. And then we have another single gal, Becca, just arrived. And so um, we have a team here. Without that team, we could not do what we do. Um, how can they help? Number one, wipeeverytear.org. We're on Facebook, Instagram as well. You can follow us. Uh, and and, and uh, I say this here. If you want to be involved, I even give my phone number, 208. This is my personal phone number. This, this is my phone number that in, in my cell phone, 208-866-1967. Guys, you can call me. And I'm just telling you, we are, we're always in great need uh, uh, financially. And, and you can log on, you can see like ways to give uh, and so forth and so on. And consider coming on a trip. You'll be transformed. You will be, you'll be changed for the rest of your life, 10 day trips. Um, we'd love to have you and your friends come on a trip. We'd really, we really need you to come on a trip to get those girls out of the bars. It's huge, 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 huge. And for our audio listeners, and, and for our audio listeners, first off, uh, Mr. Mr. Satch, how old are you, sir? I'm a young 67, my friend. For, for my audio listeners, this man is is jacked, right? He's the he has he's his full head of hair, strong like an ox, like still going, still charging, doing all of this sharp. When I tell you sharp in gentlemen, so don't be fooled, right? This man is active. And I hope one day I can be as good looking as this man when I get, <laughs> when I get that age. This is huge. So, oh, wipe every, brother, wipeeverytear.org, www.wipeeverytear.org. Connect, connect, connect. Sir, you have given so many nuggets this episode, this 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 season. If you had one more nugget in the hat, what would you say to that young girl being trafficked, her back's against the wall, and she's scared to death? on whether she should she should yeah. make the move to leave her pimp. What would you say to her right now watching? I would say, you know, dear girl, I mean, I've looked at so many girls and said this to them. There is a way out. There is a way out. There really is. You feel your chains of bondage to your pimp. You feel, you, you remember the, the nightmarish thing that he said he's going to do to your to your sisters, your brothers. I'm telling you, it's all to threaten you. It's to it's to force you to stay underneath his thumb and underneath his foot. And uh, I'm here to say there is a way out. Please call the hotline number that's available all over our, our nation, the 1-800 number. And uh, I just want you to have hope that 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 also that, that and most importantly that there is a real God who's deeply in love with you. His name is Jesus, the Son of God, and He offers you hope and freedom if you give your life over to Him and say, "Oh God, I believe you. I love you. I want you to come into my life and change me forever." He's real and He's always faithful to come. You will never be disappointed in God. Powerful, absolutely necessary. We have to let Mr. Satch go. He has an upcoming missions trip in October, and he has many more girls and women and young ladies to save. But, sir, I want to say this to you publicly. Thank you for what you do. And I, I also want to say, never give up. We need you. We need what you're doing. What you're doing is absolutely necessary. <sighs> Thank you, Marcus. Uh, it, it comes from your from your genuine heart, and I'm very grateful. Thank you so much for your encouraging words today, and and uh, I've really appreciated uh, being with you. And I'm believing that God will use your your podcast, this episode, to uh, help girls get set free. Uh, I truly believe it. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's the goal. That's the goal. Thank you all for tuning in. And thank you all for, for watching this episode. I hope this message encourages you, inspires you to take action. And if nothing else, if you if if nothing else, 
give, give back. Mm. The, it's it's very rare that men like Mr. Satch find their calling in this world. Some people go a lifetime and never figure out the reason they were born. And Mr. Satch is here living that purpose. But we no one crosses the finish line alone. And so we need your help. And so thank you, brother. And thank you all for tuning in to the Gentleman's Top Podcast show. I hope this helps. I hope this inspires. I hope this encourages to take action and to give. Like we end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman, and Kenny Satch of Wipe Every Tear signing off. Love you guys. Bye.